We spend a third of our lives asleep, and anyone who's ever had trouble sleeping understands the profound impact sleep has on our daily functions. What's more, sleep disorders are pervasive in modern society, causing an annual economic burden of billions of dollars, and few effective therapies are available. However, mechanisms that regulate sleep remain poorly understood. Sleep in mammals is usually determined by monitoring brain activity, which can precisely define sleep and wake states. However, sleep can also be defined behaviorally using several criteria. First, sleep mostly occurs during a specific period of the 24-hour circadian cycle, during which animals usually adopt a specific posture. Second, animals exhibit an increased arousal threshold during sleep. That is, they are less sensitive to their environment, although they can still be aroused by strong stimuli, distinguishing sleep from paralysis or coma. Third, sleep is homeostatically controlled, which can be seen as an increased need for sleep following sleep deprivation, such as after pulling an all-nighter for a test. Based on these criteria, rest in a variety of organisms has been shown to be a sleep-like state. In particular, several groups, including ours, have demonstrated behavioral, anatomical, genetic, and pharmacological conservation of sleep between zebrafish and mammals, establishing zebrafish as a simple vertebrate model for sleep research. Genetic screens are a powerful way to identify mechanisms that regulate behavior. While it's hard to perform screens using mammals, zebrafish are, are an alternative vertebrate animal that is well suited for screens. One advantage is that a single mating pair can produce hundreds of embryos at a time. Another is that zebrafish develop rapidly and show complex behaviors like sleep starting when they are only five days old. Applying traditional screening approaches to sleep poses several challenges. For example, traditional screens require generating large collections of mutant animals and following phenotypes through multiple generations of these mutants to identify the causative genetic lesions. That's a challenge under normal circumstances and is even more difficult for behavior such as sleep, which can vary widely among individuals. To avoid these problems, I, together with Jason Reel, turned to a screening approach that we developed in Alex Shear's lab at Harvard. The method works by inserting genes that encode secreted peptides into a plasmid containing a heat shock inducible promoter. We generated a library of plasmids containing over a thousand of these genes. We then injected each plasmid into embryos at the one cell stage, together with TOL2 transposase, which inserts the vector into the zebrafish genome. When zebrafish are transferred from their preferred temperature of 28 degrees Celsius to 37 degrees Celsius, the heat shock promoter is activated to drive overexpression of the peptide. For the screen, we simply look for changes in sleep after the heat shock. To do that, we placed individual zebrafish larvae into individual wells of a 96-well plate, and then tracked their locomotor activity and sleep for three days. It took Jason and I less than a year to screen about 1,000 genes. During this year, we injected 6,000 embryos a week. We got to be pretty good at injections. The screen involved almost everyone in my lab and identified a handful of genes that increase sleep or decrease sleep. One of these genes, Neuromedin U, or NMU, was carefully followed up by a graduate student in my lab, Cindy Chu. In the screen, we found that overexpression of NMU increased locomotor activity and decreased sleep, causing a severe insomnia-like phenotype. We also found that this phenotype required a functional copy of the NMU receptor 2 gene. To determine whether NMU is required for normal arousal levels, we generated zebrafish containing a mutation in the NMU gene. Consistent with the NMU overexpression phenotype, NMU mutant larvae were less active during the day. NMU mutant adults were also less active, with the largest effects around the time lights turn on in the morning, suggesting that NMU is particularly important for the transition from nighttime sleep to daytime wakefulness. We next head out to determine the genetic and neurological mechanisms that link NMU to a behavioral output. Injection of NMU has been shown to induce hyperactivity in rodents, and this effect is blocked in animals that lack a neuropeptide called corticotropin-releasing hormone, or CRH. CRH is expressed in several brain regions, including the paraventricular nucleus of the hypothalamus. These neurons activate the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis, or HPA axis, which mediates stress-induced behaviors, ultimately via glucocorticoid receptor signaling. It was hypothesized that NMU induces arousal via the HPA axis, and we tested this hypothesis by overexpressing NMU in zebrafish containing a mutation in the glucocorticoid receptor. Surprisingly, we found that NMU-induced locomotor activity persisted in glucocorticoid receptor mutants, suggesting that NMU signals via some other pathway to regulate arousal. 
To search for this pathway, Cindy overexpressed NMU and performed an in situ hybridization using a probe specific for CFOS, which is used as a marker for neuronal activity. Cindy saw activation of several brain regions, including a handful of neurons in the hindbrain near the locus ceruleus, a brain region that is known to promote arousal. After testing many cell type specific markers, Cindy was surprised to find that these hindbrain neurons also express CRH, the gene involved in the HPA axis. However, she only observed activation of CRH neurons in the hindbrain and not in the neurons that activate the HPA axis. This result provides further evidence that the HPA axis does not mediate NMU-induced arousal. Rather, our data is consistent with NMU-promoting arousal via brainstem neurons that express CRH. Finally, to test whether NMU-induced arousal requires CRH signaling, we treated NMU overexpressing larvae with a drug that blocks CRH receptor 1. We found that the drug blocked NMU-induced arousal at low doses and also reduced locomotor activity in wild-type larvae at higher doses, consistent with the requirement for CRH signaling to maintain normal arousal levels. Taken together, our data show that NMU promotes arousal via NMU receptor 2 and that this arousal requires CRH signaling. Our results suggest that NMU does not induce arousal via the HPA axis, but rather acts via CRH neurons in the hindbrain. In summary, our results identify NMU as a regulator of sleep-wake behaviors in zebrafish. We were able to reveal a novel mechanism linking signaling of the neuropeptide NMU to a specific hindbrain circuit to behavioral changes in vertebrate arousal. More generally, our work establishes an effective genetic screening strategy and provides a community resource that can be used to identify effectors of vertebrate behavior and development.